All right, today I'm going to show to you how to use Dragonfly to calculate the amount of bone that has grown around an implant. So we have here, I have loaded already uh, the implant and the bone. I've done a segmentation before. The segmentation was uh, performed using deep learning. So I had to train a network to segment properly the bone from the, the implant. And that can be a bit tricky if you try to use uh, normal segmentation just by, based on, on thresh, thresholding. So I encourage you to try and uh, have a look on the videos that have been uh, uh, put out on YouTube from Dragonfly. They will be teaching you how to use uh, deep learning or, or machine learning to segment your, your samples. So I have here uh, an example of uh, Oh, it's separated, the screw is separated here. So this is actually the implant. So you can have a look more or less how it looks like. And we have also uh, the bone. So I can show you here. So they are separated. So I'm going to start from here and you can see clearly that it's not really very uh, detailed so this uh, scan was taken at 20 micrometers pixel size so we couldn't i couldn't really segment properly the pores in the bone but that's not really important for the case here what we want to do is uh, to get uh, the amount of bone that is in contact or very close to the implant so uh, let's start by having this view here i'm going to look at the x y view and if I'm coming, if I go to a segment, I can uh, define range and click at upper Otsu. Since my my image is basically two uh, phases, it's easy to segment by Otsu here. So I have uh, just the background as black and the bone as uh, as the face. So I'm going to add to new, and I'm going to rename it to bone. I'm going to do the same now with the implant. So I've got the implant here. I select, come to segment, define range, upper Otsu, and add to new. And now I'll rename these as implant. So I have now uh, two objects that are labeled differently. One is the bone and the other one is the implant. Now I can show both at the same time and let me get rid of this. So that's how it looks like. You can clearly see that inside the implant we have a gap. That's the, the design of the implant. That can be an issue when we're doing the calculation of the distance, but I'm going to show you how to go over it. So this is a better view. You can have a look how it looks like. So we want to calculate how much bone has grown in, uh, around this implant. And in this case, it looks quite nice. There is quite a lot of bone that is in near contact with the bone, with the implant, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to get back to this view. Um, let me see what we can do first. OK, first of all, let's just view the implant. And because of this gap here, uh, I will show you how to get rid of this. So we go to, if we select the implant and we go to the segment tab and down here we have some operations and one of them is fill inner areas. So what you can do here is actually, you can select which, which kind of filling you want. And in that case, in our case, what we want to do is to fill in the Z axis. And why is it? Because now we are looking at the plane X, Y. So when you select the Z, that means that it's going to look at the, the, the Z axis that is coming out of the screen in this case, and it's going to fill everything that is in this, uh, take into account this plane that we're looking at here. So if, of course, if you want to, to use other planes, it could be tricky. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I think it will. But in this case here on the top, uh, you have the XZ. That means that you have to select the Y, always a complement. So in our case, we're going to select this one. So we're going to fill in this one, apply. That's it, it's filled. So you can look at this. And on the other plane, you can see that's all filled up. Okay, 
Um, having done this, I'm going to right click on implant and I'm going to go and create map mapping of distance map. So this will create a distance map based on the surface of starting from the surface of this object and it will give me a grayscale map of this distance. So the closer the closer I am to the implant, to the surface of this implant, the, the, the darker the, the, the grayscale will be. And as far as I go from that, I think it's better to show. So the farther I am from the implant, the lighter the color. So if I look at here, if I click here and I have a look in the, in the scale here, it goes from zero, that is like in contact with the surface, all the way to 7,499, and that is in micrometers. So this is the distance map. If I come to the segment tab here, and I select, uh, I go for define range. I can see again here that the range goes from zero to 7.5 uh, millimeters. And let's say that I want to have a look of how much, at how much, uh, at a distance from, let's say, only 50 microns. So if I select like that, 50 microns, you can see already in red here, the distance that is selected. And if I add to new here, I'm creating a new label, actually a new ROI, a region of interest. I'm going to rename it like zero, oh, actually 50 microns distance uh, let's get rid of this view here and only see so you have the implant here it looks like it's not really 50 but that's you have to remember we are working at uh, in the 3d view so that is basically the distance if you look here you can clearly see that it's very very homogeneous a distance from the implant. So this is only only giving me the distance from the metal, from the implant. What I want to see actually is how much bone is within this area. So what I can do now is uh, let's hide the implant. Uh, let's get the bone. If I select the bone, hold control and select the 50 micrometers distance, I can ask for an inter intersect. So that will give me the intersection between whatever is in that 50 microns distance from the implant. And if there is any bone that is in the same region, it means it's intersecting, it will give me only, it will keep only those. In that case, we're going to create a new, um, a new region of interest. So I can call it intersection. That's okay. So let's delete this, not delete, let's take away from the view. Okay, it seems like we got nothing here. Let's go back here, let's see what's happening. We've got this distance here. The implant, maybe I did something wrong. Let's go back and do it again. We've got the 50 and the bone. Maybe I did it wrong. I did it with the implant. Intersect, intersection. Nope. Okay, let's try and do a distance map. Let's get the distance map. Go back to segmentation and let's select 100 micrometers, a little bit larger. So this is going to be my 100 micrometer distance. And then I don't need this anymore. Now it looks like there is a bit of intersection. Uh, and I'm going to do again the intersection. There you are. So that was really not enough, the 50. So now if we look here, we've got enough intersection. So 50 was uh, very little. And we can see that there is no bone in this area. It could be some pore of the bone or some gap. So that is 
what we aiming for. So if we go back here, let's look at this with some lighting. And maybe we can put the screw original one here together. And now we have an image showing regions where there is a gap actually in the bone growth. So there was no bone in contact with the implant in these regions. So that is basically it, but we can also do analysis on that. So if you want to measure the, the how much volume of bone was grown here, you can uh, right click and go for um, you can you can just calculate the volume if you want just by doing this uh, basically here. You have, if you click here, you see the volume updated here. You can have the volume in relation to the size of the implant or, or to the amount of bone. If you double, if you click, uh, if you calculate the volume for both of them, since you, it's already calculated actually, you can just compare with. And then when you choose the other one, you're going to get a percentage of uh, one compared to the other. Sorry for it was uh, this video was uh, basically improvised. I just like I'm doing as I talk to you. So I, I hope it helps uh, somehow. Uh, what is also interesting is to get the distance map again. Let's go back to here. Get the distance map. Let's see it. Let's get rid of this for now. Let's not look at this, only this. So if I get now oops, a range of 200 and then I select again, let's write it down as 200 distance. So this is intersection with 100. Oops. And then now I do again this 200 intersecting with bone and I create a new label that's going to be the intersection 200 and now we have 100 and 200 Actually, this is not the intersection, this is the one. So that's the difference between the two. You can change the color if the color is not helping much. Let's make it red here. Now you can see. And you can compare both of them. If you click this one, a lot of reflex here. Uh, intersection 200 and then you want to compare with intersection 100 and then you do a refresh. That means that is 33% of uh, the 100% intersection is 33% of that of 200 micrometers. So when I when I go to 200 micrometers I actually get uh, two times more bone. I get to. I have to tell two two times more bone, or three hundred percent. Oh, actually, uh, sorry, four times more bone. We got three hundred percent. Sorry. Uh, okay, so that's it for now. I hope it helps you guys who are looking for some implant uh, bone analysis.